Second only to airing down your tires, one of the best things you can do to help improve the performance of your Jeep is to disconnect your front sway bar. Doing this will allow your front axle to have a greater amount of articulation and that will help keep all your tires planted on the ground even while driving over significantly uneven terrain. Of course, if you have a Rubicon, disconnecting your sway bar is as simple as pushing a button. But if you've got a Sport or Sahara or pretty much any non-Rubicon Wrangler or Gladiator, you're going to need these to do it. An 18 millimeter wrench and an 18 millimeter socket. While it doesn't cost anything to unbolt your sway bar links, it is kind of a pain to do. It's for this reason there's a whole host of aftermarket options available and all designed to help make this job a lot easier. The cheapest of these costs about 80 bucks, but then you kind of get what you pay for. Most, like these JKS quicker disconnects, come in at about the $200 range. And from experience, I can tell you they actually work pretty well. Of course, if you're willing to fork over $600 or more, there are even options available that will replace your sway bar with something a lot fancier. Being that Pippi is a bone stock Jeep JL Wrangler two-door sport, installing some kind of sway bar disconnect solution has actually been on my to-do list for quite some time now. And for those of you who've been following Pippi, you know that it's always been our purpose to keep her as stock or as stockish as possible and that any mods that we did do would be done with budget in mind. And that's why I decided to look here. Fortunately, when it comes to Jeeps, there are tons of guys and gals out there who are building theirs up. And that means there are tons of used parts available for sale just like this. This is Rubicon Sway Bar Disconnect, my favorite option. And I should note, I was able to get it for just 140 bucks. It is from an older Jeep JK Wrangler, but I did take some measurements off of Moby and I think it should bolt right up. Now, I was told that the electric motor doesn't work, but I wouldn't have bothered wiring it up anyway. And, how do you get an electronic sway bar disconnect to work without any power, you might ask? With one of these. This is an Evo No Limits manual knob, and you could typically buy one for about a hundred bucks. But as luck would have it, the guy I bought the sway bar from already had one, and he was nice enough to give it to me for free. As far as how it works goes, the electric motor on the sway bar simply moves a pin in and out of this unit right here and that causes mechanical components inside to engage or disengage. Now this thing essentially does the exact same thing only with the turn of a knob. In fact, swapping out this electric motor with this knob is the very first thing that I'll need to do before I can get this sway bar installed on Pippi using a 16 millimeter socket and an impact wrench to help speed things along, I'll be removing these three bolts, securing the electric motor in place. All right, time to get this Evo No Limits knob installed. And to do that, we're just gonna place it right where the electric sway bar motor was. And then we're gonna use the factory hardware 
to secure it in place. So as you can see, currently this is locked in place and if you look here, the knob is threaded out about half of an inch. And that's where it needs to be in order to have the sway bar locked. Now, if I thread in the knob all the way, you already heard it fall. Check this out. Ta-da! Unlocked and your sway bar is disconnected. Okay, before we can swap out Pippi's sway bar and install our new Rubicon one, this plastic air dam is gonna need to come off. And to do that, I'll be using an eight millimeter socket to remove the two bolts securing it in place to the bottom of the frame rail extensions. And then, Using a trim pry tool like this, I'll be using it to remove the eight fasteners, securing it to the front bumper. With all the pins removed, I can now pry out all the fasteners, like you see here. Okay, and just like that, the air dam comes out. Now, to make things easier for me, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on her engine and turn her wheels outward. working on the sway bar. And to do that, we're gonna be using an 18 millimeter socket, my impact wrench to speed things along, an 18 millimeter wrench, and I'll be disconnecting the bolt and nut, securing the driver's side sway bar link to the axle. So on the passenger side, there's actually a flag on the nut, so all you need is the 18 millimeter socket to get the bolt out. All right, now I'm gonna be switching out to a 15 millimeter socket attached to an extension to remove the four bolts securing the sway bar to the frame rails. Just like that, it's out. Time to recycle some parts. <laughs> Namely, the sway bar links. And to be perfectly honest, I probably could have left these sway bar links on the axle, but to remove and reinstall them onto a new sway bar is a lot easier to do on a workbench. So to do that, what I'm gonna use is an 18 millimeter gear wrench place it onto the nut, and then I'll be using a six millimeter Allen wrench to help hold the stud in place. Okay, that's one. And that's two. Okay. Now we can reinstall these on our new Rubicon sway bar. Right. 
gonna go ahead and take my torque wrench now and set it to 69 foot-pounds of torque. And then, using an 18 millimeter socket, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up these nuts. Now I should note that I did use the Allen wrench to help keep that stud from spinning and there shouldn't be any additional spinning from here on out. So here we go, finishing it up. Time to get this thing installed. Okay. As you can see, these factory bolts had some blue Loctite on them. So I'm going to put some pack on them before reinstalling everything. Alright, then using a 15 millimeter socket just like before, we can secure these guys in place. Alright, I'm going to set my torque wrench 46 foot pounds of torque for these bolts. So I've kind of run into a small problem. While there's plenty of room for this sway bar to be shifted over to clear this round cross member on our Jeep, there's a bar right here that's actually designed to help hold the sway bar motor in place and it's jammed up right up against the sway bar motor. Um, it's preventing me from just moving over half of an inch to clear this thing. I think I might have to take everything off and do a little bit of filing or grinding or something just to get this thing to shift over a hair more. All right, you can see it here a little bit better. Hang on. Right in there. Shoot, that is really dumb. I'll have to see if there's any way I can clearance that. Aha, uh -huh, look at that. I can go all the way over now. All right. Take two. All right, totally clears now. We just need to install our sway bar links back onto the axle and we'll be done. I need to set my torque wrench to 59 foot-pounds of torque. All right, last but not least, the air dam. Now, I should point out that this is totally optional, but for however minute it might be, I do think it probably saves you some fuel economy. So um, we're gonna go ahead and put ours back on or at least until we find another option. All right. 
right, that's all there is to it. Well, actually, there was one hiccup that we ran into, but as you just saw, it was easily fixed, and otherwise, everything bolted right up. I think it's time to get this thing out and put it to some use. But you know, I think there's one more thing I'd like to do. I thought I saw this earlier. Look at that. So this hitch receiver was actually from one of our older JKs, but it looks like it's gonna bolt right up. Not least, gotta tighten up these bolts to 66 foot pounds of torque. 66. Right. Now we can get out and play.